All right, so we're looking at confidence intervals for the population mean. Let's orient ourselves. From a previous video, we know that if we have a population and we know the mean of that population, if we take samples and find the sample means of those populations, they're all going to be different. They're going to vary. Okay, you should expect them over the long term to have the same mean as the population, but you can see they are quite variable. Okay, that's where we're starting. So if I took a sample from this population and said, well, the sample mean is 152.1, so the population mean is about 152.1, I'd be pretty close. I wouldn't be correct, but I'd be close. If I took this second sample and I said, well, the sample mean is 144.3, so the population mean is about 144.3, I guess I'm still close, but I'm further away than that first one. There's no real way of knowing whether I'm further away or closer um, unless I take lots and lots and lots and lots of these samples. So using words like roughly or about is good enough colloquially, but it's not good mathematically. Here I have a different picture. I have a population that has a mean of zero, and I've taken a sample mean from that population, and that sample mean is approximately 1, 0 0.95 something. I'm incorrect, I haven't got the right, so if I said to someone, oh, roughly the mean is one, but actually the mean is zero, I'm incorrect there. So what we can do, rather than saying the word roughly, is create a confidence interval. And we can increase that confidence interval until the confidence interval is large enough that the confidence interval most likely will include the sample will include the population mean. So here I'm saying, well, I took the sample mean, it was about 0 0.95, so I believe the population mean is between this value and this value. That's what our confidence interval is going to be. So now what I've done is taken 20 samples, and you can see the sample means of those are all different. One of them was really, really close to the actual population mean. Again, I have no way of knowing that it's really close to the population mean, but it was. One of them is like really, really far away from the population mean. Okay, what I can do is create a size of confidence interval. Okay, let's go to 50% there. Okay, I've created a sample mean this large, arbitrarily, and by doing so I can say the following phrase. I am 50% confident that the population mean is contained within the interval that I've suggested. Um, and we can count these up. The blue ones are obviously the ones that contain the population mean. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. All right, so over the long term, it is going to be 50%. Uh, if you look at some other samples, okay, you can see roughly each time about half of them are blue and half of them are purple. So if I increase the width of that up to something more like that, you can see I'm 90% confident. Let's go to one here. Okay, I'm 90% confident that the population mean is contained within this interval that I've suggested. And given I've got 20 samples here and two of them are purple, I must, I'm, I'm spot on here, right? 90% uh, of them do contain the population mean, 10% of them don't. I can increase that confidence interval to uh, like a 95% confidence if I can get it. Okay, and in this one, all of them are in this one. Two of them are out in this one, one of them are out. So you can see that that confidence interval is approximately showing me that one in every 20 won't contain the sample mean. As, as a statistician, being able to talk like this is really, really important because if I take a sample and if they say, well, okay, my, uh, my mean, my sample mean is 0 0.8, that one looks like. And then the person who's employed you says, well, how confident are you about the population mean being 0 0.8. You would say, I'm 0% confident. I really am almost certain that that's not going to be the population mean. And then you can create these confidence intervals and you can say, actually, I've taken my sample and I think that the population mean is between uh, 0 0.2 and 1.55. Or how confident are you of that? 
uh, there's about a 50-50 chance that the population mean is in there. And you can see why we use this 95% confidence interval. If we use a larger, a smaller confidence interval, people don't want a 50-50 chance that the population mean is what they were looking for. People want to be relatively confident. However, if you want 100% certainty, you have to have infinitely long confidence intervals, which is also useless. What do you think the uh, population mean is? Oh, somewhere between negative infinity and infinity. That's also useless. So a confidence interval of 95% or 90% or 99%, depending on how important it is to know the exact population mean, very useful. So this formula is how we're going to calculate our confidence interval. This is going to be the lower bound right here, and this is going to be the upper bound right here. Now, to understand this, both of them start from the sample mean, and then we add and subtract something from the sample mean. I'm referring to this picture. 95% uh, of all things within a standard distribution are contained within 1.96 plus or minus standard deviations from that mean. So that's where that 1.96 comes from. 1.96 standard deviations and this bit here is the standard deviation of our sample and this blue writing here just refers to this little picture I've got here do a question all right approximate 95% confidence interval we've selected 100 students and find that the sample mean to be 108.6 assume that the standard deviation for this population is 15 it's plug and play put the mean in put 1.96 in uh, the standard deviation of the population, that's an assumed standard deviation, uh, and then the square root of the sample size, and these are our two intervals, all right? That is our interval. Then the question is, what if I wanted a different confidence interval? What if it was very important to know the population was within your confidence interval, uh, and you want it to be 99% confident, or you want it to be less confident, 90% confident? Now these are commonly used Z values, 1.64, 1.96, 2.58. And if you want it to be 99% confident, instead of using 1.96, you'd use 2.58. If you want it to be 95% confident, you'd use 1.96. And 90% confident, you'd use 1.64. But the formula is the same. But, okay, these are the common ones. But what if you wanted to be even less confident? What if you wanted to be 80% confident? If you want to be 80% confident, you just need to be finding that C value right there. On my calculator here, I use an area of 0.9 because it always starts from the left, so I'm going all the way from there to there, and so that's a 90% there. And the number I get is a 1.28155. So along with these numbers here, if I wanted to be 80% confident, I would use that number. All right, that's all there is. I won't bother doing like a question where I do that because it's literally just plugging numbers into this formula.